So what we have here is what appears to be an extremely dark sapphire from Australia. Um, initially, when I got this in a parcel, I thought it would be too dark almost to cut. But upon closer examination, I discovered that a lot of the darkness is on the surface and that inside there is a yellow core which makes it look very interesting. So I'm going to try to grind off some of the darkest blue and see what we can get by concentrating most of the cut in that core. Turning on the water drip here. This is a coarser coarser wheel so I'm going to use protective glasses. Find out exactly where the darker areas are. And take them off slowly, trying not to waste any of the good material. So this still has a dark cap on it, but we're getting close to removing that dark section. The closer we get, the more often we have to examine to make sure we're not taking away too much. Let's see if we can show here how there's just a little bit of a dark cap left on this side. Still a little bit there, but not too much. So now we'll grind on the other other side. Still has the dark cap here. We've removed a decent amount of the dark cap here. And you can see that it's getting a little bit easier to see into. But this side still has some dark, virtually black areas. the rough off to get rid of the, uh, the dust that accumulates or the gemstone powder it's not actually dust because it's very wet but you can see how it's getting clearer because of the stuff on the outside that's being ground off it's very unusual that a piece of rough that looks almost black can be made clearer, but that's just because of the dark skin, very unusual dark skin on this piece. Most of the time when you can't see through gem rough, it will not cut a pretty gem, but in this case, I'm pretty excited about what this might turn into here. keeps getting clearer and clearer or lighter and lighter colored because of the stuff being ground off the surface and if it wasn't opaque then I could cut it in the stone it would get an interesting party color but when the so dark as to be actually black it's not an attractive thing to leave in the cut stone What I'm doing first is getting rid of everything that 
I'm sure won't be an attractive part of a finished gem. And then once I've done that, once I've gotten rid of, rid of everything I'm sure is useless, then I'll grind it into the shape that I want for it to be in the end, which is called a preform. It's the pre-shape that the faceted gem is going to have. See how it's got these interesting color, color variations? And most of the black is gone. I'm going to switch over to a finer wheel now because that way I can get a smoother surface. It will grind a little less rapidly and I'll have more control. You can even tell from the sound the wheel makes that it's finer. The sound it makes as it goes grinding along the gem is a smoother, more of a whispery sound instead of the rougher sound made by the coarse wheel. So, I still have to take off more of this surface stuff because it needs to look, it needs to look like it has color when it's on white. So it'll have color when it's a cut stone. It's still a little bit too dark. So it still has a little too much of this surface stuff on it. like this is actually pretty tricky to cut because you're trying to grind away enough so it's beautiful but then every bit you ground away is something you also paid for and it makes the final gem smaller so you want to be a little bit careful not to grind away too much or more than more than is necessary to make a beautiful finished stone. Preforming is one of the most important steps in cutting because it's where the decision is made what shape, how large, and even usually what cutting style is going to be used on a stone. And so it's when you get either good yield or bad yield or decide on something that's going to be beautiful or something that often is not as attractive. So, trying to find the best balance of beauty and color in this stone here. Which you can see, there's the yellow center. It's still got some green. Green isn't a bad thing as long as it's a light enough green so you can see some good color through it. But the color that the light shows shining from behind it is not an accurate representation of what it'll look like when it's cut because cut gemstones don't have lights behind them they have lights on top of them so it, you need to be careful that it doesn't get too dark when cut and of course it'll shine a little bit more and show the color a little bit better but not a lot better than it will like this so Gotta try to try to get that color as good as possible. 
starting off a little more of the dark here. There we're getting somewhere. As you may have noticed, the stone gets a lot smaller as this process. Sometimes you have to sacrifice quite a bit of weight to get the most beautiful finished gemstone. Okay, so now you can see that in all directions it's pretty easy to see color through the stone. Now I'm going to start looking at what shape I want to make the stone. And some of the rest of the darkness will be ground out in what's called the preforming or the final shaping stage. final stage that is before cutting anyway, for the faceting part. And study the shape to see where, where the bottom of the gem will best be placed and where the table of the gem will best be placed. So this is where I'm planning on putting the table, which is the topmost facet of the gem. And then here's the overall shape. To me, this is looking like a cushion or possibly an oval because of this side, which goes down quite a bit. So now I'll start grinding the outline. Since an, an oval is basically a cushion with the corners rounded more, I'll start by making it a cushion shape, essentially a cushion shape, and see how that does. Um, this one corner goes down a lot, which I think is going to cause problems. It's a little too tall for the crown height to take it all in, but maybe just a more rounded cushion will work. The more precise the preform is, the easier it is to later glue it on the dot for faceting if it's just sort of slapped on any which way then it makes it more challenging so I'm going to have to shorten this up a little bit because this side really goes down a lot True up the curvature a little bit. So this is a very rough shape of the top of the gem. You can see it's showing a lot more color now. Some of this darkness over here will still come out when the top of the gem is cut. So it'll be even lighter. And now I'm going to grind away some of the angles of the bottom that I know we won't use in the finished gem. A 
lot of decisions are made rather rapidly during this process. And this is the part of gem cutting where it's easiest to make a mistake or lose a lot of money because the wrong decisions were made. of the table just a little bit. Check how true my sides are. This preform or pre-shape is never hundred percent perfect because as you can see it's all done freehand but you get it really close then when you facet it you can true up whatever is just a little bit out of whack and get a perfectly symmetrical finished stone at it from the top to see if it needs just a little bit more truing up. Also from the bottom, sometimes looks different from the top and from the bottom. So you got to average the two out. Okay, so there we have it, a preform of a party color sapphire from Australia. It's going to be an interesting stone to see how it turns out when it's cut.